What's up, guys? It's your girl, Angie B with Baller Alert, and we have Tiffany locked in here. We're so excited for you to share this story with us. We've been talking about it one on one and uh, everybody needs to hear it. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for covering the story. Yes, absolutely. So we want to talk about Julius Jones. Um, he was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to death um in 2002 and he was accused of killing pa howell and he's been on death row for 19 years in oklahoma that's right tell us about his story and how you met his family yeah um so julius uh from oklahoma when he was 19 years old was minding his business at his home with his family uh, a friend of his who or associate of his rather from school uh, pulled up on Paul Howell, a 45-year-old insurance executive who was sitting in the driveway of his parents' home and uh, shot and killed him right then and there. Stole his car, drove, oh, excuse me, and the only witness that was in the car was actually uh, David Powell's sister, Megan Toby. So she's the only eyewitness that we have. Uh, David Powell's white man, the, the shooter was a black person. And uh, he took the car, drove it over to Julius's house and said to his friend, hey, I need to stay with you for the night. Is this cool if I crash here? And Julius is like, I don't really get what's going on, but sure, okay, fine. And the police arrive looking for this car that was just stolen and robbed at gunpoint. Um, and, and they murdered the man. Uh, when they arrived at the house, the killer told the police that Julius had done it and that he knew where Julius hid the gun. So the police walked into the house, arrested Julius. They gave him, they, they said some racial slurs to him. They called him uh, the N-word, they dared him to run. Um, and when they handcuffed him and booked him and took him in, the lawyer that he got, it was his first time ever doing a death penalty um, uh, a case. So he was not prepared, he, did not have any, he didn't have any experience. He, he even confessed, there's a fantastic Vice News video that went around where they interviewed his first lawyer. He confesses and said, I wish I would have had more time to even deal on this case and work on this case and more time to ask questions. There were things that I did not present to the jury. Like I didn't have his family testify. Julius didn't get to share his story. I didn't show them that he was actually at home when this happened. Uh, there were contradictions in what the eyewitness described as the killer. They said the killer had long hair that was no less than three inches. Julius was bald headed. Um, and so there, there was a lot of things that, that the lawyer did not present in this court case. All that led to Julius being convicted for a crime that he did not commit and also was not in attendance for. Julius has said that he didn't even know who uh, Paul Howell was until he saw his face on the news. So Julius has spent 19 plus years locked up in prison. Um, on, on September 13th, the Pardon and Parole Board, which is appoint these members, there's five of them who are appointed by the governor, Governor Stitt in uh, Oklahoma, they voted three to one. Now, I did say there were five members. One of them was asked to recuse themselves. So it was a three to one vote that granted, listen, we, we know that there was a court case. We know that he's been on death row, but something's not right. And we don't think he needs to die because something might prove his innocence. And so Oklahoma has a history of abolishing the death penalty and then bringing it back most recently. Um, it is one of the states that has killed the most amount of people in the last couple of years uh, with this death penalty. And so the, the pardon and parole board is moving in a cautious way to say, if there's even the slight possibility that he could be innocent, we are recommending to the governor that we not execute him and that we have a further investigation. That happened on September 13th. The governor said, I'm not going to take this recommendation. I think it needs to be further review and further investigation. It went back to the pardon and parole board. And so now they're having a clemency hearing on October 26th, which is a Tuesday. This is Julius's last chance to have his story told and to have the same body of people who already voted to keep Julius alive this same body of people to vote all over again with a hearing, allowing Julius to speak, allowing his family to speak, allowing the eyewitness to speak, allowing witness, uh, other folks to speak and presenting new evidence. And this will be his last chance to present his case. God forbid this board changes or changes his mind. Julius has a set execution date for November 18th. 
Julius has spent, he was locked up at 19 years old. He is now 41 years old. He's actually now been in prison on death row longer than he's been outside. And he had a, he had a promised scholarship. He was a, a, an excellent student. He had a, a scholarship for athletics. All of that was snatched from him because of a lie. And this could have been any one of us. All of us have friends that come over to visit us. All of us have friends who don't tell us everything when they show up and we're supposed to have their back because they're our friend or because we know them. And, 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 and at any point, somebody can turn their back on you and turn you into the police and lie on you and say you were the murderer in a situation that you weren't even present for. So Ju this is the timeline that we now have. There's been a lot of corrupt BS in Oklahoma in the politics of Julius's case. Their district attorney for Oklahoma City, his name is David Prater. David Prater is a lame duck. He's not running for reelection. He has a year and a half left in his role in his position. His assistant district attorney is the wife of the judge who is in charge of this case. Ray Elliott is the district judge. His wife, Sandra Elliott, is the assistant, longtime assistant district attorney, and she is married to the judge as a conflict of interest. She was on this case 19 years ago and put Julius in jail for, that, for this reason. There's also a conflict of interest with one of the members of the pardon and parole board. One of the members of the pardon and parole board, his name is uh, Richard Smotherman. He is married to a woman named Connie Smotherman, and she worked with David Prater, the district attorney, for multiple years on death, death penalty cases in his office. He's the one, he's the only one on the pardon and parole board who voted no to actually execute and go forward with Julius's execution. So we're finding a lot of conflict of interest here. We, we need to figure out, and we, are, we have already filed a petition for the governor for an investigation of the district attorney's office that was supposed to be approved on yesterday. I'm still waiting to see what the results of that decision was. Uh, if that happens, people in Oklahoma, the, the, the residents of Oklahoma, the voters of Oklahoma are responsible for making that decision. But moving forward, we all have this one last opportunity, exactly less than 40 days. We're at day 36, but less than 40 days we are at this one opportunity to save this young black man who is innocent from being executed just for the sake of saying that somebody was held accountable for the murder of Paul Howell. I have argued both in Oklahoma in person and online that if Oklahoma kills this innocent man, nobody receives justice, period. I have a really close friend. His name is Irv Roland. He's a brother of mine. I worked with him on the Breonna Taylor stuff in Louisville, Kentucky. I worked with him on voter registration last year in the 2020 election. Irv went to school with Julius. He's been his friend for years. Irv and I, I'm here in Los Angeles. Irv and I went to go get lunch a couple of weeks back and Julius called Irv to check in from prison. And when he called him, we answered it on the car speaker phone. And Irv, I was really nervous and I told Irv not to do it, but he did it anyway. Irv introduced me to Julius and I had about a 30 minute conversation with him. Julius is, to, to, to speak to somebody who has been in jail that long for something that they did not do, to have their entire, 20 years of their life snatched from them. And now to be on, to be uh, walking up until the end of the week where you're about to be on death watch for something that you did not do. I can't even explain to you what that feels like, like to even speak to the person, what that feels like. Nonetheless, be actually him. But the, the joy, the grace, the peace that he had, the confidence that he had that this, is, that this injustice is not going to happen, that God is on his side, that the people of America will do the right thing in the name of justice and freedom, in the name of righteousness. He is, he is clear and focused that we are all out here going to fight for him in the way that we need to so that he can be free. That is where his confidence lies. And I have worked with his sister, Antoinette Jones. I actually, for the first time, just met his mother last week on Wednesday and Thursday when I was in uh, Oklahoma City. And all of them are the sweetest, um, most open people and thankful for all of the support that they've been getting. Thank you so much for sharing that. What can we do as a people to help assist you, to help assist Julius moving forward? We have a I'm so glad you asked me that. I'm so glad you asked me that. So Julius, I mean, Julius has been in jail for 19 years. A lot of us are just finding out about Julius, right? And it's really because of the heightened pressure 
of this execution date, November 18th, that has been set, which uh, for a lot of us is, is the time that we can involve in something to figure out how we can be helpful. One of the things that we need to do is educate the masses on Julius. I've spoken to folks and they don't even know who he is. Some folks thought he was an elected official. Some folks have never heard his name. Uh, and so there are two videos or documentaries, if you will, about Julius. One was created in 2018 by, produced by Viola Davis, the queen herself. Uh, it's called The Last Chance. That documentary can be found on our website at justiceforjuliusjones.com. The second video I've actually posted to my Instagram just recently, but it's a Vice News video, it's about eight minutes, that shares the entire story of Julius Jones. Uh, we need to share and follow the account Justice for Julius on Instagram. We need to share what has been happening to Julius very far and very wide. Julius Jones is not a household name yet. Folks need to know his story because his story is not the only story. I know for a fact, and we all know for a fact, that the death penalty has caused people to be murdered and killed who were innocent. And, and I'm, I'm one for abolishing the death penalty. A lot of folks ain't there yet. That's where I'm at. But we, we have a conversation that we need to have about death penalty in general and how Julius Jones, an innocent man, is falling subject to this, to this rule, to this law, to this policy that was put into place by people that were elected, back to why voting is important, uh, that is going to kill him. So people need to share his story. And that's super critical. It sounds super like, oh, that's not gonna be helpful. It's actually super helpful because the more people who get a hold of his story, the more power we have to change the direction of his outcome. The second thing that we need folks to do is to visit justiceforjulius.com, visit grassrootslawproject.org. Both of those websites have petitions and call activation numbers. So when you go online to the websites, you can easily pick up your cell phone, push a button, and it'll have you call the district attorney's office. It'll have you call the governor's office, who I did not say earlier, but Governor Stitt has the, the final decision, 30 minutes up to the execution. So no matter what the outcome is on October 26th from this board, even after that, God forbid we don't get the result that we want, but even after that, the governor is the only person who can make the decision to reverse and stop the execution for Julius Jones. And he has up to 30 minutes before the execution to do it, which is a mind, excuse my language, but it's baller alert, a mind fuck to me. I'm like, how do you even do that, right? Like, how do you even 30 minutes before somebody executes, stop 30 minutes, like, what are you doing? So we, we don't wanna wait 30 minutes before the execution. We wanna get this solved as soon as possible. So the governor, the district attorney are folks that you can call. We make it super simple for folks on the website. If you're not comfortable calling, which you should get over that uncomfortability because we need to be able to speak to people that we put in the office and, and, and gave them jobs and work. But to call those people, there's also an email that we can also send to them. And there's a letter that's pre-populated. We just need as many people, lunch break, in the morning, before you go to bed, to send as many letters and make as many phone calls to the office as possible. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned he's a man of faith. Um, and usually, he's able to meet with his minister. Are they allowing him to see his faith pastor? So Minister Keith, um, who I also had the privilege of meeting not too long ago, who's a very dynamic brother, he's known Julius um, since he was 16. He's been his uh, spiritual advisor, his faith leader since he was 16 years old. Um, in the last couple of years, he has been his spiritual advisor to go back and forth into the prison. There's been conversations uh, uh, ordered by the warden who is now saying that they actually don't want Minister Keith to come into the prison anymore. Um, I think he's still able to go as of right now, but the conversation is leading up to death row or to death watch, excuse me, up until November 18th. They actually want to change who the spiritual leader is because the way that this black minister has been praying with this black young man has been, you are innocent. God's got you. We're going to get the victory at the end of this. God is faithful. Uh, people are fighting for you. Don't give up hope. God's got your back. And because of previous, uh, this is also listen document, because of previous um, executions that have happened, they have had, whether, no matter what their religious background is, they have had uh, uh, religious leaders, religious advisors come through the prison walking or ex escorting the person to the execution chamber, uh, not in a submissive way, but in a way that is rebellious, in a way that is uh, pronouncing God's power, in a way that is rebuking everybody up in the prison as it's about to happen. And the prison was like, we don't want that type of energy. We want somebody who's gonna come and help them sort of tone it down and accept, their, accept what's about to happen so that they don't panic and freak out and, and pray for them so that their soul can be at peace when they transition. And that's not the spirit First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm convicted. First of all, that's not the spirit of black people, period. 
We didn't even take that message when they taught us Jesus. We were like, wait a minute, you want us to be what? No, 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 no. We actually, we actually are more connected to Jesus now because y'all whipped him, you beat him, you rejected him. He died and came back to life. So now we actually believe we're more like Jesus than actually being the people that you were telling us to be like, which is to obey and listen to our master. We're not going to do all that. It's the same thing for Julius Jones. We don't want Julius to obey his master. We want Julius to believe that he is the person that God is going to cover and protect, and that we will, at the end of this, get the victory, and that we will be able to change the policies and the laws, not only in Oklahoma, not only in this nation, but across the world, so we can save people who are innocent. I know you mentioned there's an event coming up um, in the coming yeah. events. Uh, with different guests who are going to be speaking on behalf of the family and supporting Julius. Tell us about this event. Thank you. So um, we have, if folks are able to make it to Oklahoma City this Friday, which is, uh, what's Friday? Uh, Friday the uh, 15th. So if folks are able to make it October 15th to Oklahoma City, we're gonna be, like I said, having a, a solidarity action at the site where we do the prayer vigil, which is actually across the street from the governor's house, which is very symbolic and important. So we're having a solidarity action, a prayer vigil as Julius goes at 815 to death watch. Uh, folks all, also call this suicide watch. It's a mentally um, violent experience to go to death watch. So we are going to join him in solidarity. We're going to let him know he's not alone. We're going to let him know we're still fighting for him. And we are not succeeding to the, uh, to the execution date that's on November 18th. We are fighting so that the clemency hearing will go the way that, we, that it needs to go so that Julius can see the victory at the end of this. So if folks are able to make it on Friday at 8.15, we'll be across the street from the governor's house. There is a, a flyer that is coming out soon for that. Then we also have a, uh, an action that is happening uh, starting at that same exact location on Saturday, the following day, and it's going to be starting at 11 a.m. Folks can join us. More information can be found on the website and on our Instagram page, Justice for Julius Jones. And then lastly, let's say this weekend's too soon. You can't make it. I understand. You got to take care of family. You can't just get up and go. That's totally okay. On October 26 at noon, the clemency hearing will begin, and we're asking everybody to make the trip and join us on that Tuesday, October 26 at 9 a.m. in Oklahoma City, where the Clemens, excuse me, where the Pardon and Parole Board for the last time will be voting, hearing and voting on Julius Jones. And we need as many people there as possible to demonstrate our power. Absolutely. And the friend that you mentioned who Her. accused Julius of, oh. of shooting, where is he now? And has he admitted to the Great question. Great question. So he actually testified against Julius 19 years ago for a plea deal for 15 years in jail. He has served his time. And so the last time that I checked, he's no longer in he's no longer in prison. He served, he he this killer literally sat in the courtroom looking at an innocent man and testified against him. Sat in like literally sat in the witness chair testified on the Bible, agreed not to lie, and then lied in a courtroom for a plea deal. And you can find that information not only in the documentary, but also on our website on our fact sheet. Um, so, so he is out free. Now, he, he knows that this is happening to Julius. So he has, uh, rumor has said it, I haven't found the evidence just yet, but rumor has said it that he has actually come out and said, okay, y'all, it wasn't him, it was me, because he feels bad for what's happening to Julius. But unfortunately, the way that our injustice system is set up is that even when the person who did it comes out and says that they did it, it doesn't mean that you can undo all of a sudden all of the legal proceedings that have happened. There's still a legal proceeding and process that needs to take place. And so that the opportunity for that for Julius is October 26. We don't get to make the rules, unfortunately, unless we vote for the people who then make those rules. And in this case, they're not always on our side, but the governor has appointed people. And like I said, we had three strong yeses to support what we want in the agenda for Julius to make him free. And we're hoping that they make that best decision again on the 26th. Thank you for that. I want, I want you to stand back just a little bit so we can just see your shirt. Yeah, you can, these shirts, you can buy these shirts and you can buy the, um, I got my little wristband too. Wait, the light's kind of messing it up. Justice for Julius right here. Justice for Julius, Justice for Julius. We got crew necks. 
We got t-shirts. We want the we want the message and the word to get spread out. You can go to justiceforjulius.com to buy all the swag and the um, money is donated to the legal support to support Julius in this time. So please get the shirt, get the wristband. It's not too late. You can even get it after the 26th. Just support Julius in his story, share um, uh, the website so that folks can take action if they can't make it to Oklahoma City uh, and uh, also share the documentary so that folks can get the story out. But on the website, Justice for Julius. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, Thank you, Nancy. To make sure that we get this information out. This is very important and we have limited time. Um, so we're going to do our best to make sure that we get as much people on our end and in the community and in the area to either sign the petition and come to the hearing if possible. So thank you so much for sharing his story. This is really important and we're super grateful that you're taking the time to pour into this family and assist them because they need it. Absolutely. I, I want to quickly, I've been in relationship, close relationship with Baller Alert for the last four years. Um, and I need to shout y'all out because there are not a lot of platforms that recognize the importance of uh, culture and how politics and power all come together. And I just want to thank y'all publicly so that folks can hear me say this, that it was super easy to be able to work with y'all and say, hey, we need to save a life in Oklahoma that is a part of a systematic problem. And y'all step to the occasion, not just because you know this case is important, which it's, it's severely important, but because your values at Baller Alert respect and understand the, necessary, the, the necessity to keep our people safe. So thank you so much to Baller Alert, to the leadership, to you, Angie, for all the work that you guys do, not just to make sure we're celebrating and loving on ourselves, but also to make sure that we're supporting our communities and voting and going in a way in which we need to go to change the world. I really love y'all from the bottom of my heart, and I will always be working with y'all and have y'all back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tiffany. We love you. We appreciate you, and love is always going to be mutual between us, okay? Thank you, Angie. I'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great one. Thank you so much.